Hey friends, welcome to Embed Idea. Myself Tirthankar and you are watching 8051 course for beginners. So in this video, this is lesson 3 and I am going to discuss the following topics. First one is understanding the internal registers of 8051. Second one is how input and outputs are programmed in 8051. Third one is writing our first 8051 code in C language. And last one is whatever application will perform will run and test the application. So let's start with understanding the internal registers. So I have told you earlier that in 8051 there are two types of memories. One is ROM. ROM is a permanent memory. It's non-volatile. So when power goes off, ROM still holds the contents. So the ROM size here is 4 KB and how the ROM looks like rom looks something like this see this picture on your uh, right hand side it's like a diary page it starts with the 0000, 000 memory location and it goes up to fffh is the hexadecimal value of uh, 4095 rom is also called program memory why because whatever program we will write inside 8051 that will be stored inside this ROM as instructions. During the execution of each instruction, if the 8051 needs a temporary storage, then RAM can provide that. So RAM is a volatile memory. So when power goes off, the entire co contents is off. Here the RAM size is 128 bytes. Another 128 bytes is allocated for special function registers. I'll tell you about special function registers. Let's understand how 8051 executes the program. One more thing I want to tell you that I have told you three, four times the register. Now here in 8051 or in any microcontroller, register denotes a one byte storage. Remember this? So here is the ROM. It starts with 0000, 0, 0, 0 in hex and up to 0 f f f hex. So program counter is a special register. It's a 16 bit register. It points to the first memory location. So here the first memory location will uh, store a particular instruction. That instruction will be fetched and executed by the 8051's CPU. And when execution is finished, then the program counter will get automatically incremented and will point to the next memory location that is 0001. Similarly, it will go to the end of the program and it will come back to 0000. That's how the 8051 executes the program. Let's talk about RAM and the SFR. So the size of RAM is 128 bytes. The memory location allocated to RAM is 00 to 7F. And SFR, it's 82 FF. It's another 128 bytes. Why the name is SFR? Because special function registers are used for some special operations. For an example, program counter is one of the special function register. Here in this lesson, we'll be discussing general purpose input output. I'll show you that how many ports are there in 8051. But remember the port registers like P0, P1, P2, these are also special function registers which takes care of the input output operation. Now see this is the pin diagram. There are many things in the pin diagram and I will elaborate you in separate lessons. But here in this lesson we will only focus on the general purpose input output. See there are four ports from pin 1 to 8, then pin 10 to 17, then pin 21 to 28, then pin 32 to 39. These are the 32 input output lines. They are divided in four ports of eight lines each. Remember each line can give or take voltages to and from external circuits. Let's take the example of port 1. It's from pin number 1 to 8. Each line is denoted as C, P1.0, P1.1, P1.2 like this. Here there are four registers, P0, P1, P2 and P3. 
and all these registers are special function registers. So let's see port 1 register. This register is a 1 byte storage. So from LSB, it's P1.0, then P1.1, then P1.2 and up to the MSB is P1.7. This is how the memory are, the memories are located. Not memories, we can call it bit storage. But the beauty of this port register is, this is exactly mapped with the pins. Like P1.7 is mapped with pin number 8. So if I write some value in that bit storage P1.7, it will get reflected in pin number 8. Similarly, if I want to control pin number 3, then I have to control the bit storage P1.2. This is how input output operations happen in 8051. Now, as we are focused on the output operation, before going to tell you that, let's understand what is input and what is output. To understand this, think yourself as the microcontroller. When you are taking voltage from someone, that's the input operation. When you are giving voltage to someone, that's the output operation. So this someone in case of microcontroller is an external circuit. And as we are focused on the output operation, I'll show you the steps. So here are the steps. First, we need to configure the particular port or that particular pin as output. Then we have to write the output value. So there are two values we can write either 0 which denotes 0 volt or 1 which denotes a 5 volt. So this is how uh, we operate the output. Now I will show you one LED blinking operation. I will uh, design the circuit and I will write the program. Let us see. So first you need to open code blocks which I have already opened and minimized. So here as you have installed code block successfully. So first go to file then create new. So here in our case we will create a project. So let us click on project. As we are learning 8051 so I have to select MCS51 project. So let us click on that and click on go. It will ask for an wizard. So I will click on next. Now see project title. So I will give this project as LED and it is stored inside embed idea folder. So this is no, I want to select another folder. So in embed idea, I have the, this code folder. So I will select that. Now it is fine. No, just let me reorganize this. Let me create another folder called LED. If I create another folder, my codes will be organized. So let us select this folder called LED. Everything is LED as I will be performing an experiment on LED and 8051. Let us click on next. See the compiler is small device C compiler. Click on next. Here we can still adjust the memory we have, but I do not need anything. I have chosen the memory model as medium. Then click on finish. So everything is created. Now you can go to sources, click on main.c. You can double click on main.c, it will be opened. So here I want to show you two things. One is let us create a macro name LED and assign a pin number say P1 underscore 1. This is how P1 underscore 1 is the P1.1 that is pin number 2. And here let us declare a variable unsigned int i. I will be using this for generating delays. So I will remove the semicolon and I am creating a while 1. While 1, why? 
because this is a forever true loop. So, whatever I will write inside while 1, it will be executed repeatedly. So, here I will write LED equal to 1. That means, I am writing 1. So, 8051 will give 5 volt to the LED. So, you need to uh, you need something to visualize that the LED is glowing. Otherwise, it will be too rapid to understand. So, here I am creating a dummy loop. Dummy loop like this i equal to 0, i less than equal to 40,000, then i plus plus c. At last, semicolon. That means it is a dummy loop. It will just consume time, nothing else. So, LED equal to 0, then I am switching off the LED, again the loop, so that the two states will be visible. Here, let us make it 40,000, then I plus plus, it is again this dummy loop. Now, LED should be configured as output. So, in 8051, whatever pin you want to configure as output, you should write or initialize the pin as 0. For input, it should be 1. So, LED is 0 means LED is configured as an output pin. I think you have understood. So, after writing this uh, code, let us save it. I have pressed Ctrl S. Now, click on build. So, it is built successfully without errors. Now, I will open Proteus. So, I have already opened Proteus. If you have installed Proteus, then uh, you can just double click on the icon. So, this is Proteus. Click on ISIS. This is the main simulator. Now, the simulator window has opened. Now, click on P. Our target IC is AT89C51. As I have already told you, this is MCS8051 architecture. Just double click on that, it will be added to your panel. Then type LED active. So let us take this yellow. Yellow. This is for simulation model. Now click on at 89 c51 now click here on your panel now let's zoom it like this then click on led yellow and place it here now you are getting this sign click on it drag your mouse and connect it to p 1.1 now it is connected. Now place ground from here and connect ground at the cathode and anode should be connected to P1.1. Now if I double click on this IC, then one window will open. It will ask for the program file. So here I will locate the program file. My program file is in documents, then embed idea, then codes, then inside LED, again LED, here bin, then debug. Now, here is the hex file. See, this is the hex file LED. Let us locate that. Okay. Now, this is your simulation main panel. And this is the components panel. So, once you are done with the program file and connections, you can go to left, bottom left corner and run the simulation. See the LED is blinking. That means we have written the program successfully. Almost a second. It is almost a second, not the exact one second. But that can be adjusted by the number 40,000. The code I have written 
is I am I have given one link in the description box. You can click on that link and see the code. Now I want to tell you a quick fact. Here I want to tell you a quick fact. See this is the image. I have drawn the entire circuit. From your left hand side, see this is the image of open collector. This transistor, I am using a transistor to show you this. So this transistor is inside the IC, but this formation is known as open collector. So in this case, if uh, we apply a voltage at the base of this transistor, at the output, we'll get nothing. Why? Because this is open collector. But in second case, see, there is a VCC and the resistance is connected to the output. So here, if we apply a voltage at the base, we'll get something at the output. If the transistor is in cutoff, then we'll get the entire VCC voltage. If the transistor is in saturation, we'll get zero. This is called pull up. Look at the second image that VCC resistance formation is called pull up. In 8051, P1, P2 and P3 have internal pull ups. But P0 does not have internal pull ups. So whenever we are making a circuit using 8051, we should connect externally the pull up resistors in P0. This is the quick fact you have to remember. So in the next lesson, I'll be experimenting with buttons. I'll interface a button with 8051 and perform an experiment. So if you like this video, then press like, share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to Embed Idea because there are more 8051 lessons are coming and I'm also planning to uh, conduct another microcontroller course. So please subscribe to Embed Idea. Thanks for watching.